Afternoon, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School back down here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. Back in our series, 10 Minutes to Better Land Navigation. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to start learning to incorporate a map into our navigational tools. To do that, one of the main things we need to understand and one of the biggest confusing points in the navigational world is declination. So this is going to be dealing with declination part one, because it's going to take me two parts to cover this whole subject with you and make it easily understandable. So the first thing we're going to discuss is what is declination? We're going to discuss when and why does it matter? And we're going to discuss in this video series, three ways to avoid the problem altogether. The less problems you have in the field, the less calculations you have to do in the field, the less things that you have to worry about, the better off you are and the less mistakes you're going to make in the end. We will now have to convert paces to meters at this point, but we'll talk about that when we get to route planning and things like that. For now, let's start with the declination problem. Okay, so let's first discuss what declination is. In simple terms, declination is the angular difference from grid north to magnetic north. So understanding there are two different types of north there that you have to deal with. Grid north are the north-south lines on any map as laid down on the face of the earth. That is grid north. Magnetic north, the majority of the time, unless you're on the zero line, will be easterly or westerly of that, and that's where your compass needle points to. So that may be over here somewhere. So if I'm standing right here in the state of Ohio and I lay my map down, grid north is right here, magnetic north is over here. That difference in angle is declination. It could be westerly or it could be easterly. To figure that out, all you need to do is pull up an isogonic chart on the USGS website and I will plaster a picture of it right here on the video for you so you can see it. And it will have the zero line and then the east-west lines on there and approximate degrees where they're at in the United States. So now that we have a simple explanation of what declination is, the angular difference between grid north and magnetic north, we need to understand where to find it other than looking at the isogonic chart on the line and maybe we fall in between it somewhere and we're not sure. The first place that you can find it is on the map that you're using if you have an actual map and not a piece of a map, and that could become a different problem altogether we'll talk about in a few minutes. Every map is gonna have a chart on it right here on the map called the declination diagram. It's going to tell you on there what the difference is between grid north and magnetic north. It's also going to show you on there if it's easterly or westerly declination. If you have a piece of a map, you can go by the isogonic chart online. You can type it into Google and just say, what's my declination in this city, in this town, or whatever in this state, and it will tell you. If you have a GPS program on your phone, you'll be able to set up your north polarity within that phone to either grid north or magnetic north. So what I would suggest you do is pick a spot somewhere Pick another spot you want to travel to. Check the azimuth in grid north versus magnetic north. And that will tell you how much the difference is and whether it's easterly or westerly declination. I'm going to show you that real quick. Okay, I'm going to show you a way to figure out your declination using your GPS. This is really easy, all right? Most GPSs will have a setting in them. If I go here to settings that let you set your north reference. And you can set that north reference to magnetic or grid. So right now we're set on magnetic. So if we go back here to the map and we take a known point and we highlight it and we drag the cursor to the point we wanna to walk to, it says that we have a 29 degree magnetic azimuth. See where it says that, 29 degree M, okay? So you remember that, 29M. Now if we go back 
to settings and we change that north reference to grid and we go back to the map. It now says we have a 22 degree grid azimuth. The difference being seven degrees. So now we know we have seven degrees of declination. If we now take our compass and put the grid reading in our compass, which was 22 degrees, all right, that's our grid azimuth. Now, if we want to check our magnetic azimuth and find out which direction our declination is, all we have to do is plug in the magnetic azimuth and figure out which way it's forcing the north to go. As we go to 29, we forced our needle to the west. So we have seven degrees westerly declination here. It's a pretty simple process to figure out by yourself if you don't have any way to find a chart. Now, here's something we need to think about and realize. When we looked at the declination on our phone, which is current satellite imagery, everything's current, it's working off the satellites in the sky right now, it's telling us we have seven degrees of westerly declination. Every map that we have, even up to this classroom map right here that we're using today, that was made in 2024, says six degrees. So, for everything we're going to do today, we're going to use six degrees. But understand that, actually, it says it's seven. And I think, if I remember right, maybe a year or two years ago, I did an experiment out here with a compass to check declination and found it to be seven myself. So there's three quick, easy ways we can figure out what our declination is if we need to know. We can either look at the declination diagram on the map if we have one. We can look at the isogonic chart on the USGS website. Or we can use our own GPS to verify it. Let's discuss things we can do to eliminate having to worry about declination as we're using a map. Declination problems come in when you try to mix and match measurement systems. Again, going right back to what I said about simplifying things. It also comes into play if someone else gives you information that they took from a map using a different measuring system, possibly, than you're using. What I mean by that is, if I take a protractor and I lay it on a map, and I lay this on the grid lines of a map, that's going to be a grid azimuth I'm going to get when I plug it in. And we'll talk about that further as we go. But understand that if we use a protractor on the map and we've lined it up with the grid lines on the map, then we've created a grid azimuth, which is not going to match any azimuth we take with our compass because those are magnetic. One of the most simplistic ways to eliminate problems with declination is to avoid it altogether. If you are doing things for yourself and nobody's feeding you information, you have the map in your hand. As long as you orient the map with your compass set to zero, in other words, you haven't factored any declination into your compass whatsoever, your compass is set at zero. If you orient the map to that compass and you take all of your degree readings off the map with that compass for your travel routes, declination is of no consequence. You're not moving where things are on the map you're just adjusting the angle to match your compass of the map by orienting it with a compass at zero declination. That eliminates the entire problem. The minute you pick up a protractor, then you have a problem. So let's talk about that. If you want to use your compass at zero declination and you don't want to worry about problems with declination or doing any kind of other changes or anything else, doing any math, you're going to need to lay your map out before you plan a route on something flat, like this stump. It's always better if you can get to the edge lines of the map, like this. Take your compass out of the pouch. And again, this compass is set to zero. Lay your compass in the corner of that map. Put north at the top of that compass and rotate that map until the needle's in a doghouse. You've now oriented this map 
the six degrees magnetic declination. And anything that you do on this map is going to be the same magnetic declination. So you're using the same measurement system all the time. I've taken declination out of the equation by simply doing that. But it will only work if I orient this map with a non-declinated compass like this one, and I take all of those readings with that same compass or a zero declination compass, and I don't move this map. As long as all those things are in place, I don't have to worry about declination whatsoever. All right, the next thing that you can do is you can set the declination in your compass if it has that capability so that it matches the map and grid north. All you need to know is your declination and which direction it is. You can see I've got this one marked west six degrees. That's because this one's already set up with six degrees of declination. This one's at zero. I don't like setting declination in my compasses. There's reasons for that. Most of them are personal reasons, but if you travel or you don't operate in the same area all the time, you don't recreate in the same areas all the time, declination is going to change from location to location, and you may forget to change the declination or go back to zero when you need to, and all of those things can become a problem. However, if you're using the same map all the time, you're recreating the same area all the time, then it doesn't hurt a thing to set the declination in your compass. So how do you do that? Okay, if you look at this compass, and this one's very similar to this Brunton compass, I'll show you it first, okay? You can see this thing has a big declination thing on the back side of it here, and it's showing you zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on, okay? And you can see that this arrow is off of zero and it's toward the west. What that's telling me is that I've got six degrees, every tick mark being two, degrees of westerly declination plugged into this compass. And now it will match any map that I put it on from this area. And the only thing you have to do with that is you just hold on to this bezel ring so it can't move and you move the inner housing to adjust that. I like that option because it's no tools required. The Suunto, on the other hand, requires a tool, all right? Generally, the compass will come with a tool on it. I find those to be pretty finicky and they also seem to wanna bend. So generally what I do on my SAK is I keep one of those small screwdrivers right here on my SAK so that I can work on compasses with students and things like that to get them adjusted. If you look at this close on the back, you can see that there's a declination ring there. If you put north to the top of the compass and you look at the bottom side or the back side, this arrow will have moved off of zero so many degrees if it's got declination set into it. And you can see this one set three tick marks off of the zero to the western side. So it's set at six degrees west declination. To change that, you need this tool. One thing that I find is the compasses that you have to use a tool to adjust tend to stay put. Compasses that you can turn the housing to adjust it and hold the bezel ring still, and this one being the exception to that rule because this is a really old compass. But most of them, the housing will become loose over time, and it doesn't take much bumping around to move it off declination, which is another reason I don't like preset declination in my compass. I just don't trust it to stay there unless it's one of these Suntos, and then it will stay there. But if you're not careful, this brass screw will corrode, and then you won't be able to change it. So that's another problem. Now, the other thing you can do with this is you can change the grid lines on your map to reflect westerly declination of six degrees. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to Put your protractor on the corner of your map and line it up. And then you're going to dial in six degrees of westerly declination, which means we're going to go to 355, 354. Make sure you get this right when you do it. And we're going to put a mark right here with a black pen. And we're going to remember where that mark's at. And we're going to go up here a little further up the map. And we're going to do the same thing. Now, we have a point on the map here. And we have a point on the map down here. So we have one here and we have one here that are on this map. So now we've got a straight line here that we can 
take a black marker or something like that and we can draw a line up that map just like this giving us six degrees of offset on this map and then all we have to do is just use our ruler and keep it on the line and go all the way across the map with these six degree lines just like this now the problem with this comes in if there's a whole lot of information and lines on your map already this can get confusing but if you're using a different color like i'm using black now you're not going to mess it up too bad and once you get this done then you would use these lines to line your protractor up against for square and not the grid lines these now become your northing and southing lines for any measurements that you would take off of this map. And you would continue that all the way across the map, or at least in my case, enough of the map that I know I'm gonna be in the area that I operate all the time. And that's what I'm gonna worry about. That's where I'll be taking my azimuths from. So now that I have these declination lines on here, as long as when I lay my protractor on here to factor a bearing, which we'll talk about later, and I line it up with those lines instead of the grid lines, so it's already off at an angle. Now I've already set my declination with the map. So let's just say I want to take a reading from the center of this depression to this point in the middle of this waterway right here, or this wetland. So we would lay our protractor on there and make sure that we are lined up with these grid lines, make sure that everything is straight up and down with these lines that we put on our map or declination lines. We would put it on there and figure out what our azimuth is. And in this case, it's saying that it is a about a 40 degree azimuth. That should now match our compass that has zero declination. Now, if we bring our map out here and we got our compass we're using with it, and we first of all put it in the corner and make sure that we orient it we put north to the top. We make sure that our map is oriented to the compass. We come down here and we look at those two points again. One was here on this depression or this wetland area and one was here. And we lay our compass across those two points. We put needle in the doghouse and we have a 40 degree azimuth. So now we've made the map match the compass instead of the compass match the map. So we went out there and we matched up our declination lines on our map with our compass. 40-40, perfect. Now we've eliminated any math, okay? The purpose of this first video is to tell you how to explain what declination was, why it's a problem, when it's a problem, but then also to how to get rid of that problem altogether and not have to worry about the math. So again, three things. We can orient and plot on the ground with our compass set to zero. We can set our compass declination, in which case the compass now matches the map, or we can take the map and modify it to match the compass. And then no matter what compass we're using, we don't have to do any math. If you were using some type of an engineering compass or a military compass, like a lensetic compass, you would always have to do the math. You can't set the declination of that compass. By doing this modification to the map, you eliminate the problem. Now. Give it credit where credit's due. That modifying the map is a 10-year-old video from John McCann that is the easiest, most simple way to eliminate declination issues if you don't want to or you're unable to adjust declination of your compass. That's why it's included in this video today. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back to another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.